Did you know a ticket for the first Super Bowl costs $6? Or that it's been played in 25 different stadiums? But which four teams have never been to one? And who's the only player that's won it six times? I'll give you a hint. Brady's back! That's your quarterback! This is the history of the Super Bowl. You know about Lombardi, Montana, and Brady. But to truly tell the story of the Super Bowl, we need to start in 1960. 27-year-old Dallas businessman Lamar Hunt wanted nothing else but to own an NFL franchise. With the league's rising popularity and household names like Jim Brown and Johnny Unitas, owning a team seemed like the opportunity of a lifetime. But after multiple attempts, Hunt was denied a franchise and in turn came up with a brilliant plan. Gather a group of wealthy businessmen with the same aspirations and create a rival pro football league. This collection of men would be nicknamed the Foolish Club and their new league would be known as the AFL. You probably remember a great many sports events. However, I doubt that anything was more important than the establishment of the American Football League. The NFL suddenly had legitimate competition in stadium attendance, TV rights, the draft, and most importantly, signing star players. Hunt and the AFL made such a substantial impact that by 1966, the leagues agreed to merge, operating separately until 1970. In June of 66, the AFL and NFL agreed that their respective champions would play each other in an annual season-ending title game. Hello again, everyone, from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, and this is it, the American Football League National Football League Championship. The Kansas City Chiefs against the Green Bay Packers who have won the NFL championship four times in the last six years. Tickets at the LA Coliseum sold for an average of six bucks, and it was the only Super Bowl that failed to sell out. The game was simultaneously televised by CBS and NBC, with each network providing their own announcers. The 30-second TV commercial cost around $42,000. To put that in perspective, a 30-second ad in Super Bowl 54 would cost $5.6 million. Vince Lombardi's Packers would dominate Hunt's Chiefs en route to a 35-10 victory. McGee to the left, star dropping straight back, hit as he throws, has the ball. Packers players earned a $15,000 bonus for winning the game, while the Chiefs earned $7,500 each. By Super Bowl 54, players from the winning team would be awarded $124,000, while the team losing would receive $62,000. So how did the biggest game in the world get its name? Well, ideas like the big one, Pro Bowl, and World Series of Football were thrown around as both leagues approached the game. It was Hunt who jokingly pitched Super Bowl. But NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle finally settled on the AFL-NFL World Championship game. While that was the official name for the next two seasons, it was the media who fell in love with Super Bowl. The phrase was so widely used that by January of 1969, the Jets and Colts would square off in Super Bowl three. We're gonna win the game, I guarantee it. Namath has not been bashful this week, and he has said that the Jets are going to win. It's arguably the most important Super Bowl in history. The Baltimore Colts came in as heavy favorites, and most thought the NFL would once again overpower the AFL. But after boldly guaranteeing a win, Broadway Joe Namath led the Jets to a monumental upset, putting the AFL on the map. The Super Bowl was off and running. 65 toss power trap. That might pop wide open, Rats. Running play coming to Garrett on a trap. Touchdown! Garrett scores for the ball. Was it there, boys? Was that there, Rats? Oh, oh, nice going, baby. <laughs> The following season, Hunt and the Chiefs finally reached the pinnacle of pro football as Kansas City topped Minnesota 23-7 in Super Bowl IV. Since Super Bowl I, the winning team has received permanent possession of a sterling silver trophy created by Tiffany and Company. Originally called the World Championship Game Trophy, it was renamed the Lombardi Trophy in 1971 following the legendary coach's death. So have you ever wondered why Super Bowls are counted in Roman numerals? Well, you can credit that idea to Hunt as well. It started in Super Bowl V and Roman numerals have been used ever since. They were adopted to clear up any confusion that may occur because the Super Bowl is played in the calendar year following the regular season. Numerals one through four were added later to the first four Super Bowls. One other fun fact from Super Bowl V, 
Cowboys linebacker Chuck Howley is the only player from a losing team to be named Super Bowl MVP. Staubach drops back to pass, that's up, pass the end zone, touchdown! It's the hammer, Mike Ditka! Did you know the coldest and the warmest Super Bowls were played in back-to-back years? That's right. Roger Staubach and the Cowboys captured their first title on a 39-degree day in New Orleans. The following season, Miami capped off the only undefeated season in NFL history, while game time temperatures reached 84 degrees in Los Angeles. Super Bowl VIII between the Dolphins and Vikings was played at Rice Stadium in Houston. It's the first Super Bowl played in a non-NFL venue. In fact, that's happened seven times to date, five at the Rose Bowl and another at Stanford Stadium. Bradshaw giving it to Harris. He's in there for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. What a, what a catch by Lynn Swan. Swan, touchdown. He pulls it in, and it's a touchdown for Pittsburgh. And the Steelers stand atop the pro football world. Behind their powerful offensive attack and swarming steel curtain defense, the Steelers captured four Lombardi trophies in the 1970s alone. The final one coming in Super Bowl XIV at the Rose Bowl. It remains the highest attended Super Bowl in history with a capacity crowd of 103,985 fans. The Cowboys, meanwhile, snuck in a couple titles of their own that decade, including one in the sloppiest Super Bowl ever played. Intercepted by Dallas, a pass that should not have been thrown. And just got socked. Picked off by Aaron Kyle. And both deep for Haven Moses. Picked off by Benny Barnes. A Super Bowl record eight turnovers committed by Denver alone. Eight. As Tom Landry and Chuck Knoll's powerhouses of the 70s faded away, a budding dynasty would leap into the spotlight. Dwight Clark! It's a man! Dwight Clark's miraculous catch in the 81 NFC Championship launched the 49ers to Super Bowl 16 in Pontiac, Michigan. It's the first one played in a northern city, and in fact, there have only been six Super Bowls played in the north since the game's inception. Two in the Detroit area, the other one coming at Ford Field in Super Bowl 40. Two in Minneapolis with Super Bowls 26 and 52. Then Indianapolis was the host city for Super Bowl 46 and MetLife Stadium in the New York, New Jersey area was the home of Super Bowl 48. Super Bowl 16 was also the big game debut of announcing legend John Madden. The Hall of Fame coach is the only person to call the Super Bowl with four different networks. Madden did five with CBS, three with Fox, two with ABC, and one with NBC. Incredible. This is a father bucket. This is a mother bucket. And since the last game, They had a baby bucket, so this is a baby bucket. I guess that clears up the question as to whether they're married or not. So you might ask, when did Super Bowl Sunday become an international phenomenon? Super Bowl, Super Bowl, they'll be there. Super Bowl 17 between the Redskins and the Dolphins was the first ever to be globally broadcasted. Fans in England watched John Riggins run right through Miami. He's gone, he's gone! Touchdown, Washington Redskins! Today, the game is televised in more than 180 countries in nearly 25 languages. While Walsh and the 49ers were on their way to prominence, their California neighbors would capture a third championship in eight seasons. The Raiders took home the Lombardi Trophy in Super Bowls 11, 15, and 18 when Marcus Allen provided perhaps the most remarkable run in all NFL lore. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets away for a moment. Comes back up the middle of 30, 25, 40. Right past two men at the 50, down to the 40. Picking up a blocker to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Raiders! Holy Toledo! Following season saw a dream quarterback matchup when Joe Montana and Dan Marino squared off at Super Bowl 19 in Palo Alto. Marino's 1984 MVP season was the stuff of legend, but Montana stole the show on the game's biggest stage. While the 49ers were victorious in Northern California, it wasn't at Candlestick Park. To this day, no team has played a Super Bowl in its home stadium. The 2017 Minnesota Vikings came within one win from hosting Super Bowl 52, but you might remember they lost in Philadelphia in the title game. I'll tell you what, this defense has been incredible. (laughs) They knock your socks off just to watch it. Total decimation of the AFC champion New England Patriots. The 1985 Bears. Here we go. A lot of people call them the greatest team ever. 
After going 15-1 in the regular season, Chicago punished its playoff opponents, collecting the team's first and only Super Bowl win. Defensive end Richard Dent became just the fifth defensive player to win Super Bowl MVP. Only 10 have ever done it. We mentioned Howley earlier. Dolphins safety Jake Scott won it. Harvey Martin and Randy White became the first and only duo to split the MVP. Then there's Larry Brown, Ray Lewis, Dexter Jackson, Malcolm Smith, and who can forget Von Miller in Super Bowl 50. First and 10 at the 42. He'll hand off to Smith, the deep back. Good hole, midfield, horse race to the 40. Far side 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Timmy Smith from 58 yards. Let's talk about a one game wonder. Redskins rookie running back Timmy Smith racked up 204 rushing yards against Denver in Super Bowl 22. Now that record still stands today. Timmy Smith had 602 total rushing yards in his three-year career, but he dropped 204 in the Super Bowl. It's incredible. And as the Redskins cruised past the Broncos, Doug Williams became the first African-American quarterback to start and win a Super Bowl. Cincinnati and San Francisco would clash again in Super Bowl 23, this time in Bill Walsh's final game. With the Niners trailing and just over three minutes to play, Joe Cool engineered the greatest drive in Super Bowl history. The 49ers have a long way to go. Montana over the middle with Craig. First down play, Montana. On first down, Montana to Rice again. Montana over the middle to Craig. Montana to Rice, he's in the play. 11 catches, 216 yards. Is there another one? This one's to Craig. Back to throw, Montana. Stepped up, throw. Touchdown, 49ers! Taylor has the throw, a touchdown. A 10-yard pass. The 49ers have scored with 34 seconds remaining. The Niners matched the Steelers with their fourth Lombardi trophy, rounding out the decade with the most lopsided win in Super Bowl history, a 55-10 demolition of the Broncos. All right, so hold on. Let's take a break right in the middle of the action, and let's talk about the halftime show. Why? Because for some people, it's become just as big as the game. But it wasn't always that way. Way back in Super Bowl I, it was marching bands. 10,000 balloons, 300 pigeons, and a couple of guys in jetpacks. We've come a long way, but the jetpacks were pretty cool. Marching bands were used all the time in the early days. And then we saw a little more variety in the 70s and 80s, and then it all took off in the 90s. Because as other networks began to counter-program against the halftime show, the Super Bowl up the ante, and now we get massive performances by global stars like U2, Prince, Beyonce, and Katy Perry riding a giant gold lion across the field. On that note, back to the game. Bills fans, this is going to sting. Snap, spot, in the air, it's got the distance, it is... No good! This would be the first of four straight Super Bowl losses for Buffalo. And after winning Super Bowl 21, Bill Parcells and the Giants took home their second Lombardi trophy in five years, thanks in large part to a stifling defensive game plan from a guy named Belichick. A lot more on him later. With the 49ers run slowing down though, the door was wide open for the NFL's next dynasty, enter America's team. Again in the fumble, caught by Jimmy Jones. Aikman. Smith. And he's in! What a run! Oh my! The Cowboys steamrolled the Bills 52 to 17 in Super Bowl 27, and would do the same the following year. Two in a row. How sweet it is! It's the only time we've seen the same two teams playing back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Just one season later, the 49ers became the first team to five rings. Back to throw is Young, drills it across the middle, catch by Rice, beats the defender on the play, touchdown 49ers. Steve Young set a Super Bowl record with six touchdown passes against the Chargers. The 49-26 final marked the highest scoring Super Bowl ever. That 75 point total has yet to be topped. With Dallas closing the chapter on its 90s dynasty, a new NFC power emerged by 1996. 29 years after winning Super Bowl II, Title Town had another contender. Two tight ends set up for the Packers and far back to throw his first one. Going deep, has a man open. 
Andre Risen does the dance in, and Favre got settled down in a hurry. Brett Favre, Reggie White, and Desmond Howard brought the Lombardi Trophy home in the first ever Super Bowl aired on Fox. Howard is still the only special teams player to earn MVP honors. It was also the 13th consecutive Super Bowl win by an NFC team, by far the longest streak by either conference. Favre and the Packers will once again come out of the NFC in 1997, where they met their match in John Elway's Broncos. Elway, scrambling, looking, running, diving. Is he only 37? How bad does John Elway want to win this football game? Davis, he did so rocking, standing up. Denver's going to win it. Denver became the second wildcard team to win it all. In fact, only six have ever done it. The 1980 Raiders were the first, then those 97 Broncos, then the 2000 Ravens, the 05 Steelers, the 07 Giants, and the 2010 Aaron Rodgers Packers. Why don't we take a look at how the road to the Super Bowl has evolved through the years. In 1966, the AFL and NFL each played one playoff game to get there. That's it. By the 1970 merger, eight teams qualified for the playoffs, needing to win a divisional and championship game to reach the Super Bowl. This bracket would stay intact until 1978 when the league added one additional wildcard team per conference. In 1990, the playoff field expanded to 12 teams, adding a third wildcard team to each conference. The 12 team playoff format is alive and well today. From the 10, probably the final play of the game. It is caught by Nation. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Mike Jones made the tackle, and the Rams have won the Super Bowl. How do you like that for drama? The Rams won their first Super Bowl on a game saving tackle at the one yard line. Skip ahead a couple years where they found themselves in another classic, this time against a kid who go on to become the GOAT. Now just a minute, they have no timeouts left. Brady again throws. Not much pressure. Throws out to Redmond again. Redmond is Brady again. Up the middle, caught, and it's Troy Brown. Here comes the blitz, and here's Brady. He dumps it to Wiggins down to the 30, and now no question about it, they are in range. But I'll tell you what Tom Brady just did. Gives me goosebumps. Set to go. Snap ball down. Kick up. Kick is on the way. And it is good. It's good. It's good. And the Patriots are Super Bowl champions. After the Gruden Bowl in Super Bowl 37, Bill Belichick and the Pats would go on to win back-to-back -back titles, becoming the last team to do so. Back-to-back -back Lombardis has happened only eight times. The Packers did it in the 60s the Dolphins and Steelers in the 70s. In fact, Pittsburgh did it twice in that decade. Then there were the 49ers in the 80s, the Cowboys in the early 90s, and the Broncos in the late 90s. No team has ever won three straight Super Bowls. Devin Hester, the rookie who was so dangerous, who went to college here at Miami. He led the NFC in both kickoff returns and punt returns. And the Colts have had a hard time all season covering kicks. It's Hester trying to work it back to the middle. Gets past the first wave, and here he goes. It's Hester inside the 30. Hester's going to take it all the way for a touchdown. And no flag, 92 yards. Devin Hester, you are ridiculous. And that was the only Super Bowl opening kickoff to be returned for a touchdown. Unfortunately for the Bears, that would be the last bit of fun in Super Bowl 41. Peyton Manning and Tony Dungy would have the last laugh in the rain in Miami. And did you know that Miami has held 11 Super Bowls? The most of any city. New Orleans has been hosted 10, followed by the Los Angeles area with seven. Direct snap to Manning. Back to throw. The rush. Gonna be hit. Gonna be sacked. No. no, he got out of it. Now he fires downfield, and it is caught, caught. How in the world did he do that? What a play by Manning. He eluded three sacks, and what a catch by Tyree. One of the most incredible, improbable plays in NFL history catapulted David over Goliath in Super Bowl 42. Eli Manning and the Giants shocked the world, defeating an 18-0 Patriots team, what could have been called the greatest team in NFL history. Miller slot left, Washington outside left, Roethlisberger, pass time, throws to the back of the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown by Holmes! I don't know how he 
did it! And Super Bowl 43 is history! One great catch deserves another. With that Santonio Holmes touchdown, Mike Tomlin became the youngest head coach to win a Super Bowl at just 36 years old. Pittsburgh also took the lead with its sixth title. A year later, the Saints appeared in and won their first ever Super Bowl. Picked off. Look out. Gets past Manning. And it's Tracy Porter taking it all the way. Touchdown, New Orleans. So that begs the question which franchises have never appeared in a Super Bowl? The Texans, Browns, Jaguars, and Lions. But how many teams have appeared in but never won a Super Bowl? I got you. The Chargers, Titans, Bills, Bengals, Panthers, Vikings, Cardinals, and Falcons. After Aaron Rodgers carved up Tomlin Steelers in Super Bowl 45, the G-Men stunned New England again as Eli delivered another throw for the ages. We've seen something like this before, haven't we? Four-man rush. Eli throwing into traffic on the sideline. They're going to rule it a catch by Manningham. That's a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch by Mario Manningham. This is absolutely brilliant. That is everything you have to ask. Simply remarkable. Super Bowl 47 is the only brother versus brother head coaching battle with John Harbaugh getting the best of his little brother, Jim. That was the seventh Super Bowl held inside the New Orleans Superdome, the most of any venue. Let's fast forward to the following season when we saw the best offense in the NFL fall flat on its face against the best defense. It's snapped over the head of Peyton Manning. And the ball's out of the back of the end zone. It's a safety to start this game. Ah! Seattle carried that momentum into a heavyweight fight against the Patriots in Super Bowl 49. That game remains the most viewed broadcast in American history, with an average viewership of 114.4 million people. The back and forth slugfest came down to the final seconds when a potential dynasty was stopped in its tracks. He had bleed the clock all the way down. They're bleeding it right down, down to a half a minute. Russell Wilson extends the hands. He has it. Wilson, quick throw. And it's good. Intercepted. 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 The Butler. The New England Patriots are on to a celebration. Super Bowl 50 is the only one of its kind without a Roman numeral attached to it. It's also the latest kickoff in the game's history at 3.39 p.m. Pacific, 6.39 Eastern. The earliest kickoff? Well, that would be Super Bowl V, which started at 1.50 p.m. Eastern. Since 1991, the game has been played right around 6.30 p.m. Eastern, so that most of it's shown in a primetime TV slot. A primetime crowd was just about to fall asleep more than halfway through Super Bowl 51 when the Falcons opened up a 28-3 lead on the Patriots. And that's when things got nuts. Now they'll throw, pass is caught, that's White, touchdown! Out of the shotgun, Ryan gets hit, ball is out! Brady, end zone, touchdown! A direct snap, and it's good! Shotgun snap to Brady. Stands in, throws down the middle for Edelman. Ball's tipped, and Julian diving for it. Did he make the catch? He, he did! <laughs> Hand off. Touchdown, James White! Tom takes the step. Quick throw to Amendola. Screen left. Reaches across the goal He's line good. for a score. Toss sweep right for James White. Tucks it under the right arm. Cuts it upfield. Driving forward. It's diving to the good. goal line! It's a touchdown! It's and a title for the Patriots! It. I can't believe it! I can't believe it! They have completed the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. That's it, the largest comeback in Super Bowl history and the only game to be decided in overtime. This could decide the game. Fourth and goal. Uh -oh. And they're gonna snap it, and it's Trey Burton who throws caught. Foles, touchdown. It took a certain Philly special and a backup quarterback who would go on to get a statue to knock New England off its throne the next season. MVP Nick Foles became a Philadelphia legend, coming home with the team's first ever Lombardi Trophy. And finally, Super Bowl 53. Tickets went for an average of $4,600, just a tad more than the $6 average of Super Bowl I. 
It was also the 20th CBS broadcast on Super Sunday, putting them ahead of NBC with 19, Fox with 9, and ABC with 7. If you wanted fireworks, my friend, this was not the game for you. A 13-3 Patriots win marked the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever. But a win is a win, and for Brady, it was number six, the most by any player. Belichick became the oldest coach to win a Super Bowl at age 66, collecting his sixth ring with the Pats. And as for the team lead, Pittsburgh and New England are locked in at six apiece, at least for now. And there you have it. We have made it, my friends. You're schooled on all things Super Bowl. That's the history. Let's just be happy we're not calling it the big one.